Hello and welcome to GHHU 2901 Online Research for College Students. This is our fifth lecture in a series of ten where we're going to talk about library information sources. So last week we talked all about Google and Wikipedia and Google Scholar and some of the things that are available for free out there on the web. This week we're going to take it a more in-house and we're going to talk about the GHC libraries, what we have to offer, what's available to you from the University System of Georgia, and just kind of make sure that you're aware of all of the wonderful things that are available to you through the GHC library. But first, welcome to week five. We are now halfway through the 10-week class. Um, all of you have had a couple discussion board posts. Uh, everyone has had quizzes. Um, we're most of the way there. I think spring break might even be coming up, not next week, but the week after. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Just to recap about what we talked about last week, not everything is easily available or freely available online. Information is not always published immediately, or at least not quality information. Good information tends to take at least a couple days. And then as you progress further in time, better and more credible information sources become available. Google has good tools to use. You should use Google to your advantage. Um, the news search is fantastic. The image search is great. Everyone I know has used the video search. It's good. There's a reason why it has 90-something percent market share. Wikipedia is not evil. Everyone uses Wikipedia. Even the people who tell you not to use Wikipedia use Wikipedia. Go ahead and use it, but don't cite it, because that's not something you should do anyway in college-level research. You know, we don't look for general encyclopedias. You don't want to cite the Encyclopedia Britannica in a paper in college. Just like that, you wouldn't want to cite Wikipedia. You want to go out, you want to find more credible sources, you want to use Wikipedia as kind of a tertiary source, meaning a third-level source where it can then direct you to more credible, more direct-to-the-researcher kind of work. So, here's our pivot this week. We're going to talk about libraries. We're going to talk about some of the really awesome things that we have available to you that we go out and license. Um, Libraries really should be your go-to place for sources and papers. When you're asked to do a paper, come to the library and I'm going to show you how to run the basic search and see what we have available because I promise you we're going to have things related to your topic. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes about libraries just in general. Uh, in the academic world, the libraries are the mechanism through which uh, the institution provides a subsidy for the information needed Essentially, that means the college funds us to go out and buy material that's useful to you, the students, in your research. We work closely with the teaching faculty uh, to help them have sources available to students. So you come to the library. We, we've done most of the hard work. We've made sure that there are things available. Uh, we provide you access to books, articles, videos, pretty much anything important to your research, and we tr also try to do things that are important in your everyday life. We're kind of like your Netflix that you don't have to pay for, meaning we go out and we buy the things we think are useful, we curate what's going on there, and then we make it available to you for free. I'm going to show you some really cool databases in a couple minutes. Uh, but I promise you, you're probably going to come out of this lesson downloading an app on your smartphone uh, just because you're going to want to use it. So I showed you this graph last time. And if you notice, library shelves and librarians are all the way down here towards the bottom. This is for everyday life research. This is not for course-related research. However, if you look here, we're still doing pretty decent. Even if you're only looking at 30% of people going to the library, that's still a huge chunk of people going to the library. And this is for everyday life research. 
when we look at course-related research, we're jumping up uh, 50 to 70 percent is where we fall. So we're making huge jumps there. But this right here, scholarly and research databases, all the way at the top, 88 to 94 percent of people are using scholarly research databases. That's what I like to see. And you're going to be in that 90 percent after this lesson because you're going to see good, useful things coming out of these databases. So, like I said before, we're like your Netflix. When you look for articles through Google, more often than not, you end up at a page that looks like this. And it's going to ask you to pay to read one article for 24 hours. It's going to ask you to pay $44. Do not do this. You've got two or three options. If you ever see a page like this, log in with Open Athens and see if that works. That should direct you to your GHC library. If it doesn't or if we don't have access to it, let us know. But do not pay 50 bucks for an article. That, that's almost just offensive. <laughs> uh, you should not have to do that as a student who's doing research. If we don't have it, we'll go out and we'll get it for you. Uh, but just know, Open Athens and that link should work for you, assuming we have access to it. So, the libraries. Couple main things we, we need to talk about before we start looking at the library website. The library catalog. Does anyone remember those big card catalog things? You know, they're usually like this big yellow wood kind of thing, and that yellow wood is like only available for library people. Uh, and they're these big slots with all these cards in them. Uh, some of you may not know that. Uh, libraries have digitized our card catalog, basically the, the index of all of the things we have. And that's online on the website, and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. But if you look in the card catalog, or what we call Alma or Primo, you're going to see all the books we have, you're going to see all the ebooks we have, you're going to see the material we've licensed through different vendors. Some databases are available on the website. Many of them are not in the card catalog, though. But I'm going to show you how to look at the A to Z list to see all the databases we have to offer. Worth pointing out here is that we have a catalog and then we have databases, but then we also have something called a discovery layer. And this discovery layer provides you, the student, with one search box to search all of that. Worth pointing out though, not everything, not 100% of the things the library provides is available through that discovery layer. Sometimes we work with a vendor who's just like, uh-uh, not having it. And then we can't put them in there. But they'll be listed on that A to Z list. So I'm going to go through that with you in a moment. Um, no library, no matter how wealthy the institution, is going to have access to every little thing. Harvard actually recently came out and said they will not buy every book that's published. They used to do that. They used to say, any book that gets published, we will purchase it. Uh, but they've walked back because too many books are published and it costs way too much money. So we've gone out and we've developed, we as in librarians, have developed systems called like Gill Express or Interlibrary Loan, where one library buys the material and then they'll send it to us and then we loan it to you. So let's take a deeper dive. Let's see what this looks like. Here's the faithful library URL. Uh, that's library.highlands.edu. Opens up in a web browser. So we did this a little bit on our first day, but may have changed a little bit. This search box certainly has changed. First thing I want to point out, this Books and More tab. This is Gill Find. And that's going to be important for you to remember. It's called Gill Find. G-I-L dash find. This is where you go if you know you want to say read Harry Potter. You could just put Harry Potter in the search 
and now it's searching gill find. You see gill find right up here. It's showing me titles of books. I also get some of the images. It's telling me where it's located. So here's an interesting fact. We have the second book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and it's telling us it's in the Floyd Library. We have the, the new book, that Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, uh, available in Floyd and other libraries. You, as the user, can limit your location to one of the libraries here. So say you're Cartersville, you could just click Cartersville Shelves, and then it'll bring you back only the things that are available at Cartersville. Interesting. Uh, you might notice how Harry Potter is in the title for some of these, but it's not for all of them. Here's the last one. These searches are being done just the same as Google is being done, meaning it's going through an index. It's using the search terms. I can go ahead and I can put quotation marks around Harry Potter, and it will bring me back things with only that phrase where those two words are exactly next to each other. Did kick me out of my Floyd or my Cartersville search though. That's interesting. Okay, so this is something you're gonna need to know. On all of these things, there's usually a, a bar like this, right? Where you can limit things. So instead of saying Cartersville, let's just say physically available in the library. So I clicked available in library and now it's showing me everything that's available physically in all the libraries. Let's say I want the second book. Well, I can click it and then it will show me more information. It shows me that this is only available in the Floyd Library. But I can log in for more services. Um, for me, I'm going to do staff and faculty. Right underneath this, I don't know why I got a bar like that. It'll say students, and that would be your login. Then you sign in. This should look the same for you as well. You've got to do that mobile app duo thing. And now I'm logged in. And it's still only available in Floyd, but this request button, very useful. I can click that and I can say I want to pick this up at Cartersville or that I want to pick this up at Paulding or that I want to pick this up at Douglasville or even Heritage Hall. I would say, you know, I don't need this by March 1st of 2022. Uh, there's no requests ahead of me, and then I can just click request. What happens then is the library gets an email, and I'm recording this Sunday night, so they'll get to it Monday morning. They would physically pull the book from the shelf, and then they would send it through a courier service for you to pick up at your local branch. It's easy peasy. It costs you nothing, uh, except for a couple days of time, but that's it. So that's pretty handy. I want to point out, not every library has a copy of every book. Remember I said that earlier? So, I'm going to go with a search like history of history academic libraries. Remember I taught you last or a couple of weeks ago about the truncation and the wild card and library and librarians. Um, okay, I ran this search. I get 500 and something results. Those are the books that are available uh, through GHC. But again, not everything is available through GHC. So I can go from here to here, University System of Georgia. And now, through the magic of the internet, it's going to search all the libraries in the university system. 
And if it's only available through one of the other libraries, I'll have this little red link here. And it says check availability from other USG libraries. Well, the changing academic library and operations, culture, and environments, that sounds like something I would be interested in. So I'm going to click uh, check availability. I do that. It says uh, my library doesn't own it, but show libraries that do. And then it shows me all the libraries that have this. And I know someone who works at the Augusta Library, so I'm just going to click that and borrow it from them. Really doesn't matter which library you choose. And then I can do this. Nope, this one's not going to work because it's a special office collection. Ha. Let's try Georgia State. There we go. Oh, did I miss it? I might have missed it. Hang on. We're going to get this right. No, I can't because it was the office collection. Okay. See, there was that little request button right at the top right here. So here we go. I can borrow this book from the GSU Law Library. I click request, and then I can tell them I want this delivered to Georgia Highlands College. And then I can select, let's just say, the Paulding Library calculate the request no one else wants this and then I can click request and then in a couple days it will get delivered to the library of my location and then they'll send you an email at the library and say hey your book's ready to pick up now right now because of COVID we've got some special precautions going on we'll, we'll have them actually to be uh, picked up on the side so it's a touchless pickup kind of thing uh, I think that's actually a pretty cool idea and um, we might continue that going in the future uh, but we've got a grab-and-go model, so you can, you know, make the request at the Paulding Library and then pick it up. So, you'll find very, very useful. And then you can search outside of Georgia Highlands College to the entire university system to find books that you want. This does take you a couple days right because someone has to go and physically pull the book and then a courier has to transport it and all of that it's not quite like amazon two-day delivery it's more like you know gill four-day delivery uh but that ain't bad we're not charging you a hundred dollar membership fee okay want to also point out i said this has more than just books and that's true you can do online full access and now it'll bring you back books that you can access online. So again, this is searching like 90% of the library of books or, or the eBooks that we have. Not 100%, but most of them. And then if you want to access it, all you do is click Online Access. Again, it comes up here. It tells you it's available in eBook Central Academic Complete. Uh, you don't really need to memorize that. All you got to do is click the link and wait one moment you got to sign in this is why i mentioned open athens earlier and there you go now you can read it online easy peasy so these ebooks are super useful especially if you're doing research on say friday night and the library is not open till monday and you have a paper due Sunday night, which none of you will do because you will all plan so far in advance. This will never be an issue. But if you ever have a friend who has this particular issue, this is how you do it. You look at the ebook collection and you use these. We're going to go back and talk about citations and all of these in a, in a future lecture. But I want to point out, when you're going into these databases and you want to share the link, say, with your friend, you can't just pull this link here. This link is going to work for you, but it's not going to work for other people uh, because this is authenticated to you. So what you got to do is you got to look for something like this, and it says share link. And what this is, and this is a word you're going to want to remember, is the permalink. And you're going to want to borrow this and share this not the URL from the menu bar, but from the permalink. You might also want to do the email button. 
and this one doesn't have a separate email button but it other databases do and I'll show you that but there's the link and this is the link you want to use so that's Gilfind lots of very very useful things there we do have Galileo so this is that Primo thing that we talked about where it's going to search your books and it's going to search the articles. So let's do Harry Potter again. I run the search. If I had not just signed in, it would ask me to sign in again. And there we go. I'm going to put the R on there. And very similar interface to Gilfind, just in a different color. So check it out. Most of these databases, again, are going to have this thing on the side. You can limit to full text. So that's useful when your friend is doing the research on Sunday night for the thing that's due Sunday by midnight. Uh, you can limit to scholarly and peer-reviewed, meaning that there's a peer review process. Other scholars have reviewed this material. It is useful. It is good. It is of high quality. And then you can do publication date, which is usually pretty helpful too. Uh, we're just going to go 2000. So you see, I did all of these. That was helpful. And now I'm left with 35,000 results. No one's going to ask you to look through 35,000 results, by the way. But you should, most people spend the first couple pages looking at this. You might notice that some of these end up not being in English, and that's because we, we have Spanish programs, right? And so we also license things from different languages. You could limit it right here under language and just say, only bring me back things that are in English. And now, again, further limiting it I don't know why that got brought back. Hmm. That is interesting. Uh, but let me show you how simple this is. Let's say this article seems interesting to me. I can click PDF full text and then it would just open the article. But I can also click here and click the title. There's a reason why I would do that. It's going to show me who the author is, where it's published, the document type, the subjects, keywords, all of that. And then it's going to show me the abstract. And it's, the abstract is just a paragraph that's telling me a little bit about the article. This is useful for two reasons. One, uh, I can use the subjects here. So I can click any of these and then it would bring me back more articles on that particular topic. And two, it gives me access to some of these tools. So here's that permalink, and I can use this to send to people. I should not and could not use this. This is not going to work. This link will, so permalink. And then there's my email button, and then I can email a copy of it. But this is pretty straightforward again. I just click PDF full text, and there we go. There's my article. I can download this. I can save it, I can do whatever I would like with it, within reason. <laughs> um, that's Galileo, pretty straightforward. Uh, like what I had said, not everything in Galileo is, or not everything the library license is available in Galileo. So I can do databases A to Z, and now it's going to show me all the databases that are available. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, you can spend a good long time looking through all of these. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make you do that either. But I would recommend that you take a look at what's available to you. Uh, specifically, this is one that I don't think most people would even think that we would have available. Uh, we have a whole library of uh, vehicle repair manuals. Uh, very useful stuff. CINAHL. If I remember correctly, a lot of people were talking about doing health science majors. CINAHL is like the premier database for you. This is one 
for sure that you need to look at. It looks almost exactly like the database I just showed you. Main difference is that up here it's going to give you different things like subject headings or evidence-based care sheets. You could do show all and make sure that it's bringing you back sin all and now you run your search. What this is going to do is limit out only things to your particular interest like health science. So that's a big reason why you would limit these. Uh, you would look specifically for the database that interests you or the one your instructor has mentioned. Health Sciences, I promise you, will mention CINAHL. So, I mentioned that we have some fun things available too, and we do. First thing I want to point out, resources in the spotlight. These are ones that we really love to showcase. One I'm going to show you is Flipster. If you have a tablet or an iPad or a phone, you can download Flipster. And then let's just say Better Homes and Gardens is like one of your favorite magazines. All I did was, you know, go to Flipster, click that. Now I can flip through the Better Homes and Gardens magazine. Almost the same as if you were like reading this in the supermarket checkout line back when people used the supermarket checkout line. So, want to point out there, there's not every single magazine is available through Flipster, but there's, a, there's enough. There's a handful here. And so I really would suggest you take a look at this. You can download these on your phone. What you're doing is you're checking them out for um, a month, I believe. And then, you know, you really just read them on your phone or your tablet. Very cool, very useful. Uh, I go back and forth with this a lot where I sit there and I ha go through like binges of magazines. Really recommend you check this one out. Okay. So, that's Flipster. All your magazines available there. Overdrive. Now, this is one I really suggest you take a look at. Uh, two things you need to know about Overdrive. One, download the app on your phone called Libby. I will put the link to this in the D2L course. You download this on your phone. You can browse the books that we have. You can read them on your phone or your tablet. You can also do audiobooks. If you're anything like me, I drive a lot between GHC locations. I use Libby all the time to listen to audiobooks as I'm driving. Super useful. Works with CarPlay and Android Auto, by the way, so it pops up and you can actually listen. This app costs you nothing. Uh, download it. That is absolutely worth your time. So, we've got that. If you ever have something in here that you think you, or if you ever have a popular ebook that, you know, the public library has this long wait that's two years or something, let us know. We'll go out and we'll get it for you. <coughs> and uh, the last, second to last of these fun things is Canopy. Mentioned earlier, we are like Netflix. Well, this is one that we are most definitely like Netflix. So I just signed in. I click sign in through GHC. And now it's showing me all the videos I can access. Now, here's the thing. Not all of these are going to be like Hollywood hits. A lot of this is going to be like classic cinema. Some of this is going to be documentaries. Some of this is going to be things that you're going to enjoy watching. And there are just going to be some fun things in here, too. So this is one that I really suggest you just kind of browse and take a look at and see what's available. Don't expect, you know, Transformers to be in here. 
Uh, but you'll find, some, I promise you, you'll find some interesting stuff if you just take a look. This is one that's really cool. If you have an Apple TV or a smart TV or an Android TV or anything like that, you can download an, this app on your TV or your phone or your tablet and watch your movies that way too. Super worth it. Really cool. Um, the last thing I want to point out. We talked, oh, second to last thing. Swank, you should also know. So feature films at Swank. This one doesn't have an app, and this is one you'd have to watch on your computer. But we also go out and license films that are some Hollywood blockbusters. We do this because we have some instructors who say, hey, I want to show Apollo 13 in my class. Or that they want to show Malcolm X or Network. So you can go through these. There's only a handful here, but there's some really cool, um, really popular stuff available here. So Swank, really useful as well. But we talked previously in this class about news. And I want to point out under databases A to Z that we have a special access to the New York Times. So this is one, again, where then you can download it on your phone, you can download it on your tablet. Uh, if you click New York Times, it'll take you Okay, you got to go to accessnyt.com. Here we go. And I'll put this link again in D2L. It will eventually load. There we go. Uh, you just got to put Georgia yeah. Highlands College right there. Click that. And then it'll ask you to create an account. This is easy. It verifies your account on your school ID, and then once you do this, it will make you a New York Times account for a whole year that works. So you have full access to the New York Times. You will never hit a paywall. Uh, you also have access to the crossword puzzle from New York Times, so there's like a whole app you can download and all that, uh, as well as you know some of the cooking apps, which I think are pretty cool. So. That would be another app that we license that you could download. So that's really the library or the library databases in a nutshell. I know I have thrown a lot at you. Uh, I put links to some of the fun apps that I've mentioned in the D2L course. The thing I really want you to know, two things. One, you can't break anything. Play with it. See how it works. See what you find. Use this search box to help you find some scholarly stuff. If you ever get stuck, go ahead and chat with a librarian. Uh, if they're not available, you can submit a ticket right here. And what happens here is that then all of us get uh, an email who work in the library, and we will go out and find the answer to for you and help you first thing Monday morning. So we're available to you. Uh, right here. The other thing I want to point out, download some of the apps. They're really fun, truly. Uh, I use the New York Times app daily. I look at Canopy about once a week. Flipster, again, I binge occasionally. Um, lots of great stuff available. Okay, we're almost through the lessons. Breathe. Whew. We went through the library website. We looked at some of the offerings. We took a little bit of a deeper dive. Um, good deal. Second to last thing I want to leave you with. We hear this a lot, where libraries have this really complex organization scheme, and I can never really find what I want when I'm browsing the library. Why can't you all just organize it like a bookstore? Uh, why can't I, I go and look in the self-help section and find all the self-help books? Well, we kind of are. We kind of do have an organizational system that is organized that way. Uh, the GHC libraries use something called the Library of Congress Classification Scheme. And if you notice, in the call letter or, or the spine label, we have the first two letters, right? We have letters here. And these letters correspond to a general subject. 
one of the things that always stands out to me is M is music, right? So I know if I'm looking for a book on music, I'm going to go to the M's. Or if I'm looking for a book on technology, I'm going to go to the T's. Or if I'm looking for, you know, my field, like library science, I'm, I look at the Z's. We, we threw ourselves all the way at the end. Um, but when you find one book in the library, and, you know, when we're back to normal and you can browse the stacks, when you find that one book that's perfect for you, look to the left and look to the right. I promise you, you're going to find books on a similar topic, and books that would then be useful for that paper. So... That's it for this week. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and shoot me an email. Uh, I'm here for you. Uh, we do have that one 10 question quiz uh, this week that's online. Um, if it gives you any trouble, give me a heads up. Uh, if you have not completed the quizzes from previous weeks, use this week to catch up and get them get get it going. Um, largely because we're going to start picking up and doing a little bit more discussion forums and. Uh, the annotated bib is rapidly approaching. So I want to make sure you have time to do that. All right, all. Thank you and have a wonderful week.